Good day, everyone. Welcome to this presentation on using Bloom's taxonomy in clarifying intended learning outcomes and in constructing test blueprints. My main reference for this particular presentation will be the textbook on a taxonomy for learning, teaching, and assessing, a revision of Bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives by Anderson and Kratwall, published in 2001. In this presentation, I will cover three topics. The first will be overview of Bloom's taxonomy, then followed by a discussion on how to use Bloom's taxonomy in clarifying intended learning outcomes, and third will be the use of Bloom's taxonomy in preparing or constructing your test blueprint. So let's go to the first one. Bloom's taxonomy, under the revised edition by Kratwell and Anderson, provides us with two dimensions, the knowledge dimension and the cognitive dimension. The cognitive dimensions covers the complexity of cognitive process dimensions from simple, like remember, which is the lowest, to understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create, being the high, more complex of all the cognitive dimensions. Sometimes we divide the six into two categories, from apply to remember downwards. We call them the lower order thinking skills dimensions. And for the three dimensions going up, we call them the higher order thinking skills dimension. It's important to differentiate the, the six as they, it will help you appreciate better how you formulate your outcomes and how you formulate your test blueprints. The knowledge dimension on the other hand talks about the simple or the more concrete dimension to the more abstract dimension. So when you talk about concrete, talk about knowledge of facts, then you go a little bit more abstract using knowledge of concepts, then you go knowledge of procedure and eventually metacognitive knowledge, which is a more abstract compared to knowledge of facts. We all know that uh, the four knowledge dimensions are the things or the items that you remember, right? So you remember them, hopefully, so that you will be able to go to the next level, which is understand. Remember, you cannot understand what you cannot remember. Then what you understood, you apply. What you apply, you use in analysis. The results of your analysis will give you results of your evaluation and evaluation will help you formulate or create recommendations or actions to be taken. In the case of health professional or health professionals, it could be creating management interventions or even proposing new laboratory protocols. Now, to make it more concrete, let's use the taxonomy matrix to clarify and use all these dimensions in clarifying and formulating our intended learning outcomes. So let's go back to the pyramid that I prepared. Now let's distribute the cognitive dimension across the columns, so remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, create, and uh, knowledge dimension across the rows, facts, concept, procedures, and metacognition. Remember that knowledge dimension will have to be brought forward or used at the, in the different levels of cognitive process dimension from simple to complex. What remember, as I said earlier, you need to also understand what you understand, you need to also apply it up, up, and then eventually create. 
let's say, for example, we use a specific topic like management of patients with hypertension. And uh, of course, if you start by formulating the terminal competencies, or that will mean starting with the question, what will they be able to do at the end of the course? And, probably, and surely that will be at the level of create, say. They will be able to do something in relation to preparing a follow-up plan or they will be able to create a management plan. But they cannot arrive at that level without remembering all these things on their left side. The normal blood pressure, anatomy of cardiovascular system, and not only that, they should remember them, they should be able to understand them to the point that they can make a difference between normal and abnormal. They can explain how BP taking equipment works based on their knowledge of blood pressure and hemodynamics, and then apply them in the patient situation where they take actual BP from the patients. And from the data they collected, they should be able to analyze patients' data or let's say blood pressure for the last three months and based on that make an evaluation of the status of patient, like what is the type of hypertension of the patient based on the current available data, based on the results of physical examination, based on history taking. And based on that, they will create their follow-up plan or management plan. So you see how this particular thing are working together as a process, starting from the simple cognitive process of remembering to the more complex cognitive process of creating out of, again, the knowledge that they were able to acquire from the very beginning. You can also use this to clarify uh, metacognitive knowledge in relation to personal plan to master competencies, for example. So at the end of the day, we want them to be able to master their competencies, but they need to be able to first assess their own performance. And to assess their own performance, they need the knowledge of procedures. And based on their assessment of their own performance, they should be able to identify errors in their own procedures and clarify their own performance level. Now they know what they know. Now they know what they don't know. And hopefully that will help them prepare their own personal plan on how to master the competencies required of the program or the course. You can now add verbs to them, appropriate verbs for the cognitive dimensions, the different cognitive dimensions, Let's say follow-up plan, the create would be probably formulate and for management plan it could also be formulate but you can also use to say prepare a management plan and for metacognitive also prepare a personal plan it can all be verb related to creating moving backwards from your cognitive process dimension now you can identify some outcomes some intended learning outcomes let's say from prepare management you can ask, given a patient, classify a patient as to type and stage of hypertension. And given a patient will be able to collect BP history or take BP blood pressure from using a stigma manometer accurately. And you can further classify them into its lower order thinking skills, cognitive process dimension, like understand, explain the difference between normal and abnormal. And on the remember side, give the normal BB values, list the anatomical structures. So just by using this matrix, we're able to produce more or less 10 statements of outcomes. And for, let's like, say, breaking down the competency related to metacognitive, create. Before you can create your own personal plan, you need to go back as recognize your own errors in performing the procedure. And based on the, that evaluation, using results of own performance will prepare a personal plan to further improve BP taking techniques. Now you see how the matrix can be used or the Bloom's taxonomy matrix can be used to clarify intended learning outcomes. Now let's go to how to use Bloom's taxonomy in test blueprint construction. We go back to the same matrix all we need to do now is to make it look like a test blueprint to add another column that will be on the most rightmost side of your table. You add the total. The total here will be the total for the knowledge dimension. And we have the lowermost portion. You have another, add another row, and that will be the total for the cognitive process dimension. 
As in any test blueprint process, you always start by formulating or deciding on your total number of items. And based on the total number of items, you try to distribute the 20 to the knowledge dimensions. How many will you give to anatomy, to CVS, and here you have a 4, 10, 6 distribution. You can use any distribution you like based on your own understanding of the course, importance, time spent for a certain topic, and so on. And then you can also, uh, then you need to fill up the total for the cognitive process dimension. Remember, understand. So here you have 20, I think I missed one here, that will have to be 5-5. Five, five. The items in the bottom will tell you your priorities in relation to the cognitive process dimension. Are you into remember, are you into understand, or are you into the higher order thinking skills? The next thing you will do, of course, is to add the basic information or basic items for each of the categories. Let's say for remember and anatomy of CBS, you need to understand and anatomy, you have two, so you have a total of four, and you can fill up the next group here. For the CBS physiology, you think it will be given more num number of items because of its importance, then you distribute it along from remember to create, and then you have cardiovascular related diagnostic skills, and probably you go more into how to take BP and then evaluate results of physical examination and create probably your diagnostic plan. We will not include metacognitive because to me, basically, you don't need items for metacognition. Metacognition is really for the students to know about their own knowledge. So what we can do is give them feedback on the results of their examination and hopefully it will help them assess their own performance and help them develop their own plans on how to further improve their performance in this particular topic of interest. Now, in terms of where you focus your number of items in relation to the cognitive process dimension, you can use the timing of the test as a major consideration. For example, if, or if you're giving a test uh, that will be on the, the early stage of the program, then you may want to focus your item number distribution to the lower order thinking skills, like remember, understand, apply, but as you move to the middle of the course, you may want to start asking questions related more to application analysis, a little bit of understand and create. But at the end of uh, the course, you need to focus your measurement or your assessment in the higher order thinking skills, the analyze, evaluate, create. And that should be reflected in the number of items in your test blueprint. Maybe no more remember, no more understand. Why? Because when you ask questions at analysis, evaluation, and create level, then you have actually asked the lower order thinking skills because you cannot answer anything if you don't remember anything. You cannot analyze anything if you don't understand anything. Okay? So that's how you try to use the matrix, they use the blueprint in clarifying your internal learning outcome. So that's the end of the presentation. Thank you and have a good day.